Hi, here we are. Last video of four on um, natural language processing. And so in the first video, we converted documents into vectors. And that allowed us to find similar documents because we could just look in vector space. In the second video, we performed classification on documents. And we, we actually did some machine learning. And um, in doing so, we changed the vectors a little bit of the documents because we were looking for how to separate them into documents that were about movies and not about movies. And therefore, in the third episode, we were able to plot those documents and see how we were able to find a separation in the 3D, document, uh, 3D vector space where the documents were... Uh, projected down to 3D space. And so in this final episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and look at some of Hugging Face's um, pipeline elements. So they have a pipeline set up, which means in our case, it's an easy way to perform certain tasks. So we're going to go through some of those tasks, such as uh, machine translation, summarization, text generation. And we're also going to look at named entity recognition. So how could you in a document find all of the mentions of a company or different companies or different locations? And uh, so let's get started. So in the um, Hugging Face pipelines, we've got, uh, we've got some documentation here, their main documentation. You can also go into the uh, code itself to see more detail. So let's look at the first pipeline. So you can um, generate text from a prompt. So what we do is from transformers import pipeline. And then we want to say, which of the pipelines are we wanting to run? And so in this case, we're running text generation. And uh, then we just pass in text to our text generator. And what it does is it takes some text that we write and continues to write from it. Um, and the way this, one way this is done is through recurrent neural network models that recurrent neural network models always have a vector that represents everything that it's seen so far. And from that vector, kind of like in, ep in episode two where we did a, a classification into two buckets, they do a, a classification into 50,000 buckets, which represents your vocabulary size of 50,000. Then you can pick the most likely word or a word based on its probability. You add it to you, what you've written, update the vector, and keep doing that process for as long as you want. And so in this case, we see we want it for a max length of 100. And when we run it, it downloads. It takes a while to download, 30 seconds or so. And then um, we get uh, from the space aliens came to me to talk about, it says, the space aliens came to me to talk about their own race to whom they had come to enslave. Because they were aliens, they were more like friends and the only beings of intelligence that humans came to know. So that sounds um, pretty cool. Now, it, you know, it's meaningless. So we talked about how in the first episode that in order to write, you have to have some concepts in mind. Uh, and then the process is putting those concepts down on paper. So uh, machines don't have those concepts currently. They just have that process similar to the one I described a moment ago. But you can generate a lot of text, and it's certainly a lot of fun. But, and it's certainly really easy. It's, it's, uh, you just call the text generator, and off you are. And so summarization is pretty similar. So um, one, so what, one way these are trained is you take documents and you generate a summary of the documents. And one way these are trained, as I was starting to say, was the Daily Mail is a British publication. And they would have a bunch of news articles. And they would have bullet points that summarize the news articles. And so that's one great method of training is can you recreate the bullet points from the um, news article. And so um, there is a little bit of a bug in the documentation. The documentation at the moment, I'm sure it'll get fixed soon, it just says call pipeline summarization. But as you find in this, as I dug through and I found this GitHub issue when I got the error, uh, you have to actually specify the model and the tokenizer. So you can do that. And of course, this code, uh, well, this is just a Jupyter notebook and there's not a ton of code in it, but this what what it is, such that it is, will be available on our GitHub. So in this case, um, I should have given it a news-like article because that's what it was trained on. But I wanted to have continuity in the data set we use, so I gave it my um, tweets. And so 
what it did is to summarize them, it extracted out two of them, changing them slightly. So it, it said that the two, it, it, it basically just said, this weekend I was able to convince my youngest son, age seven, to branch beyond chicken nuggets to orange chicken, which is one of the tweets. And it didn't include the uh, culinary victory hashtag. It thought that wasn't necessary. And then, uh, and then it said, I don't know why, but refactoring code is a lot of fun. And it changed the final hashtag. So it makes sense that it would do something weird, but there is an interesting aspect here. And one is that um, there are two kinds of summarization. There's extractive, which is pulling out the most relevant sentences uh, for a, uh, pulling out the most relative sentences from a document. And then there is abstractive, which is writing from scratch. And this is an abstractive, as most deep learning methods are, I assume this one is as well, an abstractive summarizer, but it acted more like an extractive one because it, it couldn't, um, because it just didn't know what to do with this text, which was unlike what it was trained. Okay, and the final uh, thing of generating text that we'll look, like, look at is translation, which is a, um, how you convert text from one language to another. And um, and this is what, you know, kind of started a little bit of a renaissance in NLP in the last 10 years because translation actually finally started to work. So in this case, we have translation from English to French. And uh, we have uh, cats don't like to wrestle translated into this. Now, I don't speak French. I don't know one phrase, uh, je ne peux pas français. But this, I believe, says uh, cats don't like to wrestle, and it uses B-A-T-T-R-E, which I looked up means beat, like beat down, I think. Um, whereas in Google, basically, when I put it in a Google Translate, I get pretty much the same thing, except they use looter, or however they pronounce it. Um, so that's not bad. So uh, in the pipeline, I don't have a ton of languages set up, but... Uh, I'm sure there are more of them if you dig underneath the hood and uh, language pairs, I mean. And also, as we'll see at the end of the video, there's something called Open Neural Machine Translation, Open NMT, that has a lot of languages. Okay, now, uh, the last pipeline element we'll look at is a little different. It is named entity recognition. And I have this uh, little uh, tweet here. If you like Jane Austen, I'm sorry, if you write Jane Austen, Google Docs recommends a correction to Austin. If you write Austin, Texas, it doesn't. Nice. And I thought it was really nice that Google Docs was able to figure that out. And uh, so if we run um, name entity recognition by passing in a name entity recognition name for the pipeline, and recall the pipeline names are all here and here, um, then it says that Jane Austen is a MISC which, okay, she's not really a miscellaneous, but I misspelled it, so that might be why. It says Google Docs is an organization. Well, okay, kind of. It does recommend something. And, uh, and it just says Austin is a, is a miss, A-U-S-T-E-N, which is kind of not great. And it says Austin is a location and Texas is a location. So that's not bad. Now, in general, this is going to work better. Um, then if you, this is just a really weird sentence. It's got a lot going on in it. But if you say something more straightforward, like I drove from New York City to Boston and I met George Bush, it should work pretty well. And so um, I want to close with a Spacey once again. Spacey is probably the most common tool used by NLP practitioners. And it does uh, named entity recognition as well. And there's two ways we can extract out the named entities. One is uh, you load it up, and notice here that we're using a, a different model. This is just a, the regular small model, whereas before we were using a vector model when we did this in episode one. And you pull in the tokens, and you can just iterate over the tokens with uh, token, uh, token ENTIOB, which is I for inside, O for outside, and B for beginning, and we'll see that in a moment, and then entity type. So let's print that out. I mean, sorry, let's run that and print that out. And we get if you write quote, and those are all not named entities. So it's outside. And Jane Austen, okay, recognizes her as a person. It begins here with Jane and then outside ends it. 
So Jane Austen is a person. Even though I spelled it wrong, he gets that. That's good. It says Google Docs is a person. Well, that's not quite right. But again, Google Docs is recommending. So it seems like a person thing to do. And uh, work of art. Austin is not a work of art. Um, Austin is a person, it says, which, well, Austin, Texas, I believe, was named after Stephen F. Austin, but uh, that's not what's being meant here. And then Texas is a geopolitical entity, and that's, of course, right. So um, not, not bad. Um, this is a weird sentence. Again, on a regular sentence, it does. I've seen it work much better. It'll generally work better. Now, the other way to do it is uh, just look at the docs.ents. So doc.ents, and then you print off the text, the start care, the end care, and the label, and that gives you a much more organized way of looking at what's in there. So you get Jane Austen, person, Google Docs, person, and, and so on. Now, this will work better in general than as you see on this tweet here, but in your organization, you're probably going to have domain-specific uh, text and you may want to train it on your data which you can do uh, here Spacey shows you how to do that so just follow that and you can even train your own different kind of entity so let's say you want to pull out medicines in text and you you can train an entity recognizer for medicines that way so that is uh, basically what I wanted to show you um, and so the, the goal of this course was to help you see what is useful in natural language processing right now and to show you how to use it. I, I imagine it might be difficult if you're in a business or something and you hear a lot about NLP doing all this crazy stuff, having all these long conversations and everything and then wondering, okay, is what can NLP do for me? Can it do all these things? And so I've tried to break it down into what's actually helpful and useful at the moment. And there's three main things. So you can find similar documents with vectors. That works well. And it works better than the old way, which was TF-IDF, Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency, which was basically just a way of taking an overlap of the exact words in the document. Um, in this way, by using vectors, we don't have to know the exact words. You know, we don't have to know that automobile and car are synonyms because deep, le uh, uh, excuse me, deep learning figures that out. Uh, and then the other thing that's useful is classification by converting documents to vectors. And classification works really well. And um, in general, if you're wondering how can I use AI in my organization, uh, think classification. If you can convert things into a classification problem, putting things, taking some entity or something, a document or a decision or what have you, and putting it into different buckets, AI can do that pretty well. So uh, that's a great way to use AI. Um, and also, as we saw, extracting and named entities of interest. This does work pretty well uh, in general, and you can train it on your own uh, data. So uh, you may want to know every paragraph that mentions a medicine, for example. So we focus mostly on Hugging Face and Spacey, but there are a lot of other great tools out there. Um, I mentioned OpenNMT, which is great for uh, translations and summarization. Um, there's Allen NLP, which is a little more researchy, but it's good. Uh, Stanford NLP, which has been around a long time. It's in Java. Um, it's really good. If you need to do constituency parsing, like that's making those little parse trees, then I think Stanford NLP is a good, good way to go. And then Fast AI. So I've, uh, I haven't used Fast AI, but uh, I've, heard, I've heard some great things, so I wanted to put a couple links here. So I hope you learned some stuff, and I hope you enjoyed some, some of this, whole, maybe half of it. I don't know. And uh, hope everything goes well.